everybody. Welcome from my home. My name is Goryaka. When COVID-19 became known, all my assignments were canceled. During the first lockdown, I decided to use my knowledge and skills to start a talk show. I already do it in Papiamento, in Dutch and in Spanish, and as of today, also in English for my English-speaking viewers. My first guest is Catherine Velmi. She is a marketing coach, an entrepreneur, she is also an author of journals and notebooks, and a podcast host. Today, she talks about how and when she started her own company, her podcast show, and also about women with dynamic purpose. Welcome to Goryaka! I very much listen to my gut. I think people have to learn how to build up their confidence. You have to trust yourself. And I like to remind people that they need to have confidence in themselves because it, you can't get it externally. If you're looking for confidence externally, you're relying on what other people think and they don't know you like you know yourself. So you have to build your own confidence. You have to talk to yourself on a regular basis and say, I can do these things or get the education you need or go to YouTube or get a book. And then your confidence will build and then you can then really trust your gut. Where were you born, Catherine? I was born in Brooklyn in the U.S. I lived in uh, New York uh, for half my life and then I moved to Georgia uh, for this half of my life. <laughs> Your parents are from Caribbean islands, right? Yes, yes. My parents are from Martinique and uh, two of my sisters were born in Martinique. One of my sisters were, uh, was born in um, France. And then uh, eventually we moved to the U.S. and then I was born here. But I've been to Martinique plenty of times, which I love. Martinique is beautiful. It's got so much um, good food and, and the smell of Martinique, the flowers and the, my family is there. So I, I love Martinique. Have you ever thought of living there? Living there? No, I, I just uh, always think of visiting on a regular basis. Do your parents uh, live still? My dad is uh, an angel. He's uh, He passed in 2014. My mother's still here. She's 83. She's fantastic. Um, and uh, she doesn't live too far. She lives with one of my sisters. She is She's still here and healthy. And how many brothers and sisters are you? I have three sisters. My dad had only girls. He used to complain because even the animals we brought in the house were always girls. <laughs> They're all older. I'm the baby. <laughs> And um, what did you study? I went to school and I studied uh, marketing and psychology. I actually did the backwards. I actually studied psychology with a minor in marketing. I really love psychology and the psychology of people and understanding their affect and how they um, react to things. I also um, did a lot of study in um, philosophy, but my major was um, uh, psychology at the time. Are you working also in the same things? I work in marketing. I think I liked the study of psychology more than the practical application of psychology. So I took what I learned and I applied it to uh, my marketing and how I think about marketing. Uh, so I, I had been in marketing and for about 30 years, mostly in the healthcare space. But uh, I use a lot, and I still do that today, of what I learned in psychology in my marketing. You are mostly now in the healthcare industry, right? Yeah, I worked in the healthcare space for about as long as I've been in marketing. And um, I just am comfortable in that space and that I understand the terminology. I've worked with many uh, physicians, many HIM, health information management directors, um, just working with organizations that are in the healthcare space. I love that uh, balance of doing marketing, but also working with organizations that ultimately help people or, or hospitals help patients. Mm -hmm. Understanding the complexity around healthcare has been uh, something that I can bring to the table for many of my clients. Your healthcare situation is very complicated in the States. Yes, yes. Looking outside in, it is very complicated. And I, and I think there's a lot of change coming. But right now, the, the way the healthcare was set up, it's more of a fee for service. And doctors were, are paid more for quantity 
and not quality. And that is slowly changing. And the more that people can start focusing on quality care as opposed to sick care, um, we're going to get into a, a better place. But today it's very complicated. There's a lot of regulations. There's a lot of um, the need for interoperability. A lot of people want it and uh, understand the need for it. But at the same time, healthcare is a business. So you have all these organizations working separately with their own uh, technologies, their um, own uh, goals, and it just makes it uh, a bit of a challenge. When you're talking to a doctor, they went into the business to help people, but the healthcare business makes it hard for them to work in a way to make money and to help people. So that dynamic has to change, uh, but you know, you get politics and you get regulations in it and it just slows down, the, it, it just gums up the process. But I know, like I know with working with so many healthcare folks that there are a lot of good people with good ideas that want to make it better. And I believe that in the long run, if we can get those people, you know, moving financed and moving forward and their voices out there, we will get to a better place with healthcare. You started a podcast about healthcare also. Well, uh, I have been in healthcare for a long time, like I mentioned, and I was working uh, at the time with Sue Chamberlain. Um, she's a good friend of mine. And a lot of the companies I worked with, we worked with PHI, which is Protected Health Information. And um, as rules and regulations are changing, there is there seems to be uh, a misunderstanding of or a trying to find the balance between getting people access to all of their information, but at the same time keeping it safe, right? Because we all know there are hackers, there are people that spend all their time and energy trying to get your personal health information or protected health information. So I created this podcast with Sue to kind of talk about um, healthcare in general, mostly protected health information and all the rules and regulations and all the changes that are coming. Um, we all, we speak a lot of times directly to the HIM audience, which is the health information manager, and they're the ones who who are the stewards and the owners of protected health information at uh, healthcare organizations. And so we're trying to help them um, get information. We bring guests on our shows that are experts and to talk about it. And sometimes we also bring uh, people that are patients on the show to talk about protected health information from their perspective. So to me, it was um, talking about and uh, removing the mystery around protected health information and it's just a way also for me to share my information and love for healthcare. Um, so this way as people are looking for a marketer they understand that they're working with someone who is um, right. an advocate. To, to me it's a crime that um, not everybody has access to healthcare. There's, there's a play on words that you'll hear a lot in the U.S. People say oh you can have everyone can get health care if they want it. I don't, my personal opinion is that everyone should just have it. Health care is about preserving life and everyone should have the ability to stay healthy uh, with the help of health care. Do you have children, uh, Catherine? I do. I have two beautiful girls. Oh, you have They're girls also. <laughs> I only have girls. <laughs> My oldest is a 2D graphic uh, artist. She does um, uh, graphic design, but but uh, for videos and things like that. And she's also a, pro a prolific gamer. My youngest daughter, um, she is um, uh, uh, an expert in yoga. Uh, she's got 500 hours of yoga training, and she's also working right now at a um, a fabric um, a high. It's it's like a high end fabric design company, and she helps them facilitate uh, orders and things like that for um, the designers. And okay. so uh, you are also a marketing coach, and you are a co-founder of Women with Dynamic Purpose. 
As a marketing coach, that's my uh, marketing side, which is CV Strategic Marketing Solutions. And I call myself a marketing coach because I try to help people's relationship with marketing. Uh, one of the things I learned uh, working for many years in the corporate setting was two things. Number one, people have a, um, a backwards view of marketing. When you approach marketing from the tactical side instead of the strategy side, you tend to have um, uh, results that are not quite what you were expecting. And then you say, oh, marketing is bad. Marketing doesn't work. But really, it's your relationship with marketing. So helping organizations get a better relationship and understanding of marketing and then creating the right strategy allows them to optimize their brand, their lead generation, and also their communication with their clients. Uh, the other thing I learned in the corporate setting was that as you're uh, rising in age and getting older as a woman in the corporate setting, sometimes uh, people start to marginalize you, not uh, treat you the same, and your opportunities start to diminish. And so uh, the co-founder of Women with Dynamic Purpose, uh, myself, that's Emmy Weber, and I, we were, all our lives we were in marketing and we continue to be in marketing. And what we did was we applied what we know in marketing to our um, organization where uh, people need to follow a, a particular step uh, to understand what their purpose is, either at their current organization or what they want to do in the future. Identify the path to get to that purpose and then build a community to help you because women really need to work better at building a business community, which is the network to help them um, uh, strive and thrive in the business setting. Do you agree with me that women should support each other more also instead of seeing each other like competitors? Yeah, that's one of the things I talk about a lot is that for a long time, when you would go into a conference room, there would be maybe one or two women at the table. And then it would be like, oh my gosh, if another woman comes in, one woman has to come out. And so the, the underlying um, feeling was competitiveness. Really, we just have to look at the right people for the right jobs. And we have to also understand that there's enough opportunity for everyone. It may not be at that organization, it could be somewhere else. And you have to change how you talk about it. When you see a woman doing well, you have to say, that is awesome. How can I help her do better? Because that is pos positive energy that will flow back and forth, not only for that person, but it'll flow to you. Because we have to learn how to talk and view women as just people that we want to help to do better and that will help you. So it's a whole mindset that we have to um, uh, really focus on. And it's the same thing as a person of color. It was the same thing. You saw only a few people in uh, the corporate setting and, and it was always like, if there's one person comes in, one person has to come out. But really what it is, is just looking at it differently and seeing opportunity everywhere. Who were your role models when you were younger and still? Hmm. You know, that's a good question. I had a few role models, but not too many women role models. I I kind of looked to how people were doing things. I mean, you know, you have the basics like, you know, my Angelou, I love her words, well, how she spoke. Because I remember uh, when I was young, because we lived in Brooklyn, and my mom worked in Manhattan. She was a uh, medical technician. Um, she would always say she never wore her uh, uniform. She always was dressed up in this beautiful outfit, always in high heels and walking to work. And for the longest, I was, I was like, I want to be just like her, you know, looking really professional with her high heels and, and really walking with um, purpose. Uh, with regards to my philosophy, I always read a lot of Plato, which is very confusing to read, but I like the, the concept of Plato because it's more focused on what you need as opposed to what you want. Because when you think of what you want, it's endless and there's no end to wants. When as you think about needs, you tend to be a little more, I, I'm cold, I need a coat. It's not, I'm cold, I need a fur coat, or not that I 
advocate for, but you know, so it's thinking more simply. So this way I can reach my goals. Also, I, I read a lot of things like um, mindfulness things like uh, Deepak Chopra and um, Dwayne, uh, Wayne Dyer and things like that. So it's, it's kind of like a, a whole mixture of things, but mostly about mindset and how to, how you feel and how, what kind of energy you put out into the world. Oh, you know what? One more. My dad, because my dad and I used to have lots of conversations about fear and not letting fear be the thing to stop you. That can only happen when you accept external, you know, stimuli of people telling you, you can't do this or you can't do that or why would you do this? Uh, you're going to lose all your money. It's all about learning how to trust yourself and not having fear. That was such a big thing in my life because a lot of people try to stop you unintentionally, but they do try to stop you because they're projecting their fear to you mm -hmm. and learning how to just say, okay, that's all right. And then move on and, and go forward. So, okay. So I said I didn't have, but I have my mom, my dad. <laughs> what was a difficult moment in your life, Catherine? And what did you learn? Well, there, geez, that's a good question. Well, in the business side, a difficult time in my life, I remember I worked many years um, at a, a company um, taking their marketing from nothing or from very tactical to really high level. And then eventually there was a big change and um, there was layoffs and so on. And what I found was that I spent so much time focusing on promoting the company which was exactly what I needed to do. What I should have done was also make sure I was promoting my brand and myself. And that's what I learned. And that was the evolution of women with dynamic purpose. It's because when I, when I left the company, I was looking for a, a, an organization um, to help me, to help guide me. And I couldn't find, I found a lot of places that were inspirational, I am a, a kind of a details person. I like facts. I like steps. And I couldn't find that anywhere. So my friend and I, we were like, you know what? If we can't find a thing, let's make a thing. And that's why we created Women with Dynamic Purpose. The other challenge I had was when I lost my dad. He, he was a great guy. You know, we had great conversations and, and we had a lot of uh, time where we would uh, just talk and laugh and so on. And, and when when I lost my dad, it really affected me. But I decided because of our conversations, because he used to say, we're just energy. He goes, my energy will be everywhere. So when I think about my dad, I write stories that he told me down and I have this book um, right over here. I have this book where I just keep writing little thoughts about my dad. And so they make me smile and they make me laugh. He died of liver cancer and um, it was... Um, I think it was a, a sad day for the universe. I learned how to take that tragedy, uh, tragedy and turn it into great memories. But he's here. He's yep, here. Here sure. and here. Always. Do you have Always. some tips or recommendation to help busy women keep noise out and let creativity in? Yes, yes. I love working with my clients. I love working with women with dynamic purpose. I love art. I'm an artist. I create uh, journals and so on and so forth. And so there's always a lot of things happening. But every now and then I have to remind myself to sit back and meditate. One of the things I would recommend is take time to be quiet. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. And there's a, a lot of length of time that you can take to do that. Like one, I'll go to the spa for like a day and it's not a fancy spa. And I'll just go there and I'll spend a whole day not talking to anyone. And I find that when I'm silent, um, creativity can kind of flow and suddenly I can answer questions that I was stuck on before. And sometimes it's meditating for like 10 minutes and you can find a little space in your house or go for a walk. And so meditating can be different things for different people. Because a lot of people think that meditating means you're not thinking. And what it is is that you're focusing on one thing. You're breathing, um, something um, in front of you like a tree. So it could just be for five minutes and it's really just breathing deep and finding a center. And you can do that every day, like when you're drinking your coffee. What recommendation or what tip do you have to all the women viewers? You know, women, there's so much power in uh, 
women, um, we, we have the ability because of how, I guess, society has raised us. We have the ability to do so much stuff, but we also require a, a lot of external uh, validation. Many women um, in the corporate setting and so on, they want someone to give them a promotion when really you have to learn how to use your voice trust yourself and ask for what you need. And one of the things I like to do is you have to write down, because a lot of times people don't even realize how many um, great things they do. You have to write those things down. You have to write your accomplishments down. Uh, and so this way you can review them and remind yourself how good you are. So talk, talk good about yourself. Like So when you're talking to yourself, and you make a mistake, you're not bad, you're not dumb, you didn't, it's not a tragedy. Learn from all your mistakes, talk kindly to yourself, and then also learn how to be your own best advocate. Speak for yourself. You don't need other people to speak for you. It's nice when they do. Speak for yourself. Make sure to ask for what you want. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Catherine gave us such great advices and tips. Remember, learn how to be your own best advocate, speak for yourself, and ask for what you want. Thank you for watching, and I see you next time. Bye-bye.